Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. In this video, we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of different capacitor testers, and that will help you determine which particular capacitor tester or capacitor testers would be the best for what you're servicing. There's many different tests that can be performed on capacitors, and all of these testers test capacitors a little bit differently, and I'll get into that in this video. So let's get started. The first capacitor tester that we're going to take a look at today is this Peco Model C25. And this is classified as an in-circuit capacitor tester, and it truly is an in-circuit capacitor tester due to the ingenious little circuit that they've designed inside this box. It really is quite bizarre. So there are two tubes inside this unit. First is the indicator tube here, and then there's a little oscillator tube that's located inside. The power supply inside this box has no filter capacitor, so both of these tubes are running off of AC. There's no filtering at all. Very interesting design. So it almost makes one of these capacitor testers pretty much ready just to plug right in and try out. There's no filter capacitors to really go bad and damage anything inside the device. Very interesting. Now, these particular capacitor testers can be had at, you know, ham radio swap meets or online for relatively cheap. And when you get them, it's always a good idea just to go through them anyways and, you know, check everything out, make sure everything is good. Now, inside this unit is a 40 megahertz oscillator. And that 40 megahertz oscillator is basically feeding a signal through this piece of coax, which is cut to exactly one quarter wavelength. Now there's a trimmer capacitor inside this that you can adjust. So, you know, if it's trimmed a little shorter, a little longer, you can adjust that frequency in there. The person that added these ends onto the end of the coax here obviously did not understand how this works because these are way too long and this is going to cause erroneous readings. So these need to be very short little leads with little alligator clips on the ends in order for this thing to work correctly. And I plan on doing a restoration on this little capacitor tester here in the future. So if you're interested in seeing that, leave your comments below and uh, I'll revisit this in the future. So at any rate, a very ingenious design. So the whole idea is to you know feed a 40 megahertz signal through this piece of coax here. And then what you do is you clip this into the circuit across the capacitor inside the circuit and whatever is hooked in line or you know if there's any resistors that are hooked to this inside the unit, because this is oscillating at such a high frequency, it's going to basically ignore the rest of the circuitry. So when I get into the restoration of this particular device, I'll explain a little bit more about that at that point. Now, one of the, the cons to this particular device is a lot of the capacitors that you're going to be looking at in, say, a radio, an amplifier, or say even an older television, nowadays have developed leakage. This particular capacitor tester is a go or no go kind of test. It's basically looking at extremes. It's either a short or an open capacitor and that's basically all it's looking for and it's a relatively easy tester to read because a closed eye indicates a defective capacitor in these modes here so this really is not going to indicate leakage and that's a very important thing to be looking for nowadays because the capacitors in these older amplifiers and you know radios and televisions are developing leakage by now because they're breaking down inside again this is looking for extremes. This is either looking for a short or for an open capacitor. So you're not going to be able to test that leakage. That is the con to this particular capacitor tester. This ICO 955 is very similar to the last capacitor tester that we looked at. The difference being is this capacitor tester has a much reduced range. If you recall, the PECO went to 400 microfarad for testing electrolytics. This one tops out at only 50 microfarad. Now, again, this is an in-circuit tester, and it's not really looking at an in-between state. It really is a go, no-go kind of test. So we have a short test, and we have an open test, and then we have our capacity test here, which we would use this for. Now, in my own opinion, if you saw something like this on a table, unless you're an ICO collector, I wouldn't really be too interested in something like this. 
Now, if you're interested in, you know, say the price was right, say this was, you know, you know, five bucks or something like that, and the iTube in this was still good, might be worth picking up for the iTube. Or if you want something just as a shelf queen or something like that, you know, that'd be fine as well. So if you're interested in seeing the inside of this and you know, going over the circuitry and seeing the way this particular device works, you may also want to leave that below in the comments as well. This unit oscillates at around 22 megacycles, whereas the Peco oscillates around 40 megacycles. So the design is similar, frequencies are a little bit different, things like that. Again, you know, this is really just the reduced range version of that other tester. So in my own opinion, if you see one of these things and you're looking for a usable capacitor tester, keep on walking. Heathkit capacitor tester model CT1, similar to the last design, yet even a further reduced range. Lower oscillating frequency, about 19 megacycles. So again, unless you're looking for a nice eye tube for an older radio or something like that, my suggestion is to keep on walking. This is one of my favorite capacitor checkers. This is the Heathkit model IT11. I have another favorite, which is my Jackson model 591, but I won't talk about that today just because it pretty much does the same thing that this capacitor tester does. It's just a different name. And in fact, the Jackson is a little safer than this particular tester as well. But that safety thing can be a catch 22 because the safety thing on the Jackson tester eliminates one of the functions that this particular tester is capable of. And I'll explain that here in just a little bit. So this is still a very valid piece of test gear today on any test bench. This does a whole host of different functions and it does so many functions that it's really beyond the scope of this video here. So explaining exactly everything that this tester does could be a video within itself. Now, I really only use this particular capacitor tester for its leakage function. And you can see leakage here. This is the test that all of those other capacitor testers didn't do. Those were all just pretty much go and no go kind of tests. This will test that in between state. This will indicate when a capacitor is breaking down inside. So when the paper is going bad, essentially the capacitor is turning into a resistor. Now, this doesn't supply any RF into the circuit like the other capacitor testers do, so this requires you to disconnect one end of the capacitor in order to make that test within the circuit. What this does is this applies DC across the capacitor and reads the leakage current that the capacitor has itself. So it'll measure the amount of leakage and it'll display that on the eye here. So if the eye closes, that tells you that the capacitor is bad. And that of course is when this is in the leakage position. So this brings me to the safety talk about this particular capacitor tester. This is a very dangerous capacitor tester if you don't know what you're doing, just because of this switch right here. Now, as you can see, we have a voltage control here that goes from three volts in steps all the way up to 600 volts. So if this is in the leakage position, like it is now, and this is up at 600 volts, there is 600 volts across these two terminals at all times until you click this to discharge. Now you'll notice that this isn't spring loaded. In the Jackson tester, this is spring loaded and it'll spring back to the discharge position. This you can leave in leakage and forget about it. And that makes this very dangerous. Now here's the thing. Many people want this non spring loaded switch because they like to use this to try to reform capacitors. So there's that catch 22 thing. So you need to be very careful with this capacitor tester. If you forget about this and try to remove a capacitor, you're in for a nasty shock. If you have an electrolytic capacitor across these terminals, it could be deadly. So you always need to remember to click this to discharge. Watch the tube up here. The tube will indicate when the capacitor is discharged. Once this indicates the cap is discharged, you never take a chance. You always take a screwdriver and short it across the capacitor before you remove it. You can imagine what would happen if you had this in the electrolytic position and say you had a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor charged up to 400 volts and it wasn't 
you know, properly discharged. So say it was still again, sitting at that 400 volts, that would be a very, very dangerous situation. So if you're going to use a capacitor tester like this, I strongly suggest that you read the instruction manual, become very familiar with this device. What I always do, I always make a note to make sure this is in discharge and turn that rate back down to three before I use it again for the next capacitor. It's kind of like one of those things that you just do automatically. If you were to forget and you left this at 150 volts and say you took a 25 volt capacitor and put it across these terminals and accidentally hit leakage, the thing's going to explode. So it can be very dangerous. So you need to be very, very careful with this capacitor tester. So other than that, this thing is a great device to use. This has so many different features. You can even look at turns ratios or work out turns ratios of transformers with this thing. Again, this goes well beyond the scope of this video here. Again, I only use this device for its leakage test. I use digital meters for everything else. And in a moment, we'll take a look at those digital meters as well. The next meter we're going to take a look at is known as an LCR meter. So L for inductance, C for capacitance, and R for resistance. This particular meter has the added bonus of being able to test microwave diodes and Zener diodes up to 6.8 volts. The reason it'll test a 6.8 volt Zener diode is because the unit itself is powered by an internal 9 volt battery. Now, the reason that I'm talking about LCR and not just C in this particular meter here is because if you're going to have any type of electronic service bench, or if you're going to do any type of electronic servicing, there's going to be a point in time when you're going to need to test some form of inductor. And this will do it. The price of an LCR meter, an LCR meter like this, really isn't that much more than a dedicated capacitance meter. And by having this, you know, you get all of this in basically one meter. So very handy thing to have on the bench. Now, the thing that really made this particular meter shine for me, the DLM240, this is made by Circuit Test, is the inductance range. This goes to 200 Henrys. Now, I'm dealing a lot with modified Heising modulation and modulation reactors. And a lot of the times, those reactors are up around 60 to 80 Henrys. And that exceeds the range of a lot of these particular types of meters. This one here will test up to 200 Henrys, so this is comfortably within the range. And that's what really made this particular meter stand out to me. So you can test things with the alligator clips or you can plug capacitors directly into the unit itself to do the test. So it is very versatile. So this particular meter or some variant of a meter like this is an absolute must for any electronic service bench nowadays. If you plan on working on switch mode power supplies, owning an ESR meter is an absolute must. ESR stands for equivalent series resistance. So you can picture an electrolytic capacitor with a resistor in series with one of the legs. Now the nice thing about these particular meters is they will test a lot of the capacitors right in circuit so you don't even need to remove them. Again this is dealing with RF so we're dealing with a signal at the jacks here which a lot of the times, not all of the times, but a lot of the times pretty much avoids all the rest of the circuitry in there so you're pretty much just testing the cap. Now, ESR, you can look at it like this. Switch mode power supplies, first of all, are very hard on electrolytic capacitors. A lot of the times, electrolytic capacitors leak, and they'll end up drying up. And when they dry up, they develop ESR. And ESR can be looked at like a resistor in line with one of the leads climbing in resistance over time as this is drying up. Well, if we have a resistor say in line with a 1000 microfarad capacitor here and say it's up to 5 ohms and it's going up to 10 ohms and then up to 15 ohms well what's going to happen to that resistor if it's in series with that capacitor and the capacitor is working in the circuit that resistor is going to get hot and that's effectively what the capacitor is now doing it's becoming resistive and it's getting hot inside and it's kind of like a runaway situation the capacitor itself will keep getting hot and hot and hot and it'll really start to boil. Sometimes they burst out of the top. And if you've worked on any kind of a computer power supply or motherboards, you've seen that. They actually kind of explode on the top and they let the pressure out because they boil inside. And that is because of developed ESR. And that's what this particular meter tests. It's handy. It has its own little chart right on the face right here. So you can look up the rating of the capacitor and compare your ESR reading to what's on the chart here. 
and you'll know if the capacitor is faulty or not. Again, if you're working on any type of a switch mode power supply, owning some form of an ESR meter is an absolute must to find these capacitors. A lot of the times you'll test the capacitor in a normal capacitor tester, just looking at its capacitance, it'll test fine. But when you test it with an ESR meter, it grossly fails. Here's an example of using two different capacitor testers to help us identify whether a capacitor is good or bad. The first test will be a capacitance test. The second test will be a leakage test. The capacitor we're going to test today is a brand new wax capacitor. It's 0.1 microfarad at 200 volts DC. Still has a wax on the leads here. Had to warm up the time machine for this one. So the capacitor tester here is set to 2 microfarad. That's the scale it's set to because this capacitor is rated at 0.1 microfarad. So what I'll do is I'll just clip the test leads onto the capacitor here. And as you can see, it's reading 0.14. So one might think that this capacitor is actually a little bit of an overachiever. So it looks good on this tester. Now what I'm going to do is remove the two leads from this tester here. I'm going to make sure the voltage is sitting at 3 volts and the switch here is on discharge. I'm going to plug the leads in to the leakage test now. and I'll just set this off to the side so that I don't have to hold the capacitor when I'm putting voltage across this. So now what I'm going to do is click the switch to leakage and slowly advance the voltage control here. If you keep an eye on the eye tube, you'll see that the eye will close when I click this to leakage. That's indicating that it's charging this capacitor. When the capacitor is charged, the eye will open. So here we go. So there's three volts across this capacitor now. The eye is open, indicating that there is not excessive leakage current. So we'll go to six volts, 10 volts, 15 volts. You can see it's slowing down. 25 volts. The eye isn't opening anymore, indicating that this capacitor is excessively leaky at 25 volts. Now, if we look at the capacitor here again, you can see that it's rated for 200 volts. Being a wax capacitor like this, we know that this is going to be in some form of vacuum tube circuitry, and chances are it's going to be close to 200 volts. If this is leaking at 25 volts, we're going to have a big problem with the equipment that this particular capacitor is in. So this capacitor is very faulty. So this did not indicate the fault where this did. That's why it's so important to have a leakage tester. Let's test a small electrolytic capacitor. So the capacitor we're going to test is rated 100 microfarad at 25 volts. And as you can see, it looks like it's in nice condition. The vent hasn't popped or anything like that. So the first test we're going to perform is a capacitance test. So I'll take this capacitor and plug it into these slots right here. And we have 104 microfarad. Capacitor is rated at 100 microfarad. Looks pretty good. Now let's perform an ESR test. So in order to use this little meter here, what we need to do first is turn the meter on. Since this is a low ohms meter, it wants to read its own lead resistance. So we have to zero that out. So clip the leads together first and then hit the button one more time. And it zeroes that out. So now, We'll take this 100 microfarad 25 volt capacitor and test its ESR. And as you can see, we have 0.54 of an ohm. So remember that 0.54. If we take a look at the chart here, we can see 100 microfarad at 25 volts, the approximate worst ESR value is 0.32. This capacitor is reading 0.54, which means that this capacitor has excessive ESR and needs to be replaced. So you can see how important it is to perform multiple tests on many capacitors. Just doing a simple capacitance test 
much of the time is not enough. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. Hope you enjoyed this episode involving all of these capacitor testers. If you did, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more episodes coming like this in the near future. If you haven't subscribed yet, you may want to do that as well. I also have an ongoing electronics course on Patreon that covers vacuum tube and solid state electronics, and it's friendly to all skill levels. So I'll have the link just below the video right about here. If you're interested in taking part in that, you might want to check that out as well. So until next time, take care. Bye for now.